Welcome to Level Up Tribes. Level Up Tribes provides resources to help you attain the necessary resources to level up your mind, body, and soul and realize your full potential. It is about exploring, learning, providing you with the tools from the experts for you to create a better version of yourself. I am your host, Agnes Goodwine, and welcome Tribes. Jamie Fitzgerald holds a master's in traditional Chinese medicine, TCM, from Five Branches University in Santa Cruz, California. She was honored to complete her internship at the prestigious Sejong Medical University in Hangzhou, China. During her internship, she specialized in TCM, internal medicine, acupuncture, tuina massage, and gynecology. She is currently the chairwoman of the Arizona State Acupuncture Board of Examiners, as well as being both locally and nationally board-accredited practitioner and holds various national certifications in her field of work. She began her journey in whole body medicine 18 years ago by earning her Reiki Master's in the Mikao Usui lineage of the Japanese healing method. While practicing Reiki, she attended ASU for her undergraduate studies. Soon after, she began at the Southwest Institute for the Healing Arts, became certified as a master massage therapist and natural esthetician. Since returning to Arizona to practice, she has founded both the Healing Point Acupuncture and Herbal Medicine Clinic in Phoenix, Arizona, and Desert Sage Wellness Center in Ahwatukee, Arizona. Along with her amazing business partner, Mindy Hayden, she co-founded both East Valley Community Acupuncture Clinic in Gilbert, Arizona, as well as Wise Phoenix Continuing Education. Her specialty is the individualized level of service she extends to her patients. Her patients leave armed with information and treatment plans to help navigate what are often complicated health issues. By investing time, attention, and knowledge for each client, her patients receive exceptional services in a confidential and non-intrusive environment. Welcome, Jamie, to Level of Tribes podcast. Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Oh, I'm honored. And honors all mine. Let's um, talk about your journey and how it began in whole body medicine. Oh, man, it feels like a long time ago now. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I started this journey very, very young. Um, my father was raised as a Christian scientist, and they don't actually believe in going to the doctor. You know, they're all about prayer, which is absolutely beautiful. But for my mother and my father, that was a little bit of a conflict from time to time. <laughs> you know, my mother really wanted to take me to my doc to a doctor. My father didn't. They had a wonderful compromise in taking me to an acupuncturist when I was very young. Okay. So I started seeing an acupuncturist uh, in elementary school for various and sundry problems. Uh, sometimes I would just go in and say, oh my gosh, my parents are driving me crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Please help, I'm so stressed. Granted, I'm, I'm like in second grade, right? So how stressed am I? But what I found at that point is that uh, acupuncture was really great at treating me physically and emotionally, and it set me up uh, for a lifetime of a relationship with acupuncture. That's beautiful. I feel very lucky that that's the path my life yes. took. Uh, I've used it to fight many ailments that I've had throughout my lifetime. Um, I've had endometriosis when I was very young. Mm. The endometriosis uh, really kept me for a good part of the month in pain. I couldn't do anything. I remember rolling around on the ground, crying at my mom, confused about what was happening. It got so bad that I was nauseated all the time. Even in, in, in high school, there were points where I was so nauseated that uh, I couldn't eat. And I remember after an acupuncture treatment, sitting in my car, eating a burrito and crying like, oh, I can eat. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it, was, it was amazing for me. In my adulthood, my mother has Parkinson's disease. Okay. She was diagnosed with Parkinson's disease when I was in sixth grade. We've been using acupuncture to help mediate her Parkinson's disease. Okay. And for us, you know, it's not the same for everybody, but for us, it's really created a situation where my mom's Parkinson's isn't moving forward. We've reached a really nice, 
healthy place where she can have a good quality of life. That's beautiful. It's a big deal. It's a yes. big deal. And, you know, it, I have to give her props. She has really dedicated herself to this path and, and seen the benefits of it. That's so. beautiful. That's great news. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful news. And it's just one other way that acupuncture throughout my whole lifetime has actually really improved my quality of life. Yes. And to that point, talk to us about what is acupuncture and its purpose. Great. I mean, that's really the most important thing. There's so many misconceptions out there about what acupuncture actually is. Um, essentially, it is the insertion of very thin needles into strategic points along the body to affect a physical, emotional, or even a spiritual change in people. A lot of times these points are on Areas that relate to areas of great blood flow or areas where nerves are or okay. areas where nerve junctions, uh, ner neuromuscular junctions are, so where the nerve meets the muscle. Okay. Um, by knowing where these places are and how they affect the body, you can have great changes occur. Traditionally, acupuncture is described as moving blockages in the body. Right, So thousands of years ago, 5,000 years ago, they started doing acupuncture in China, and they found that there are these pathways on the body, and on those pathways, specific points. And those are the acupuncture points. In these pathways, our chi, or our vital force, our moving energy of our bodies, moves along these channels. When it gets stuck and things aren't moving clearly, that's when we start having you know, issues and diseases and disorders. Acupuncture uses needles to help move that chi uh, freely and in that way bring out a healthier body. Uh, there's a lot of myth out there about acupuncture. Can we just get those out of the way? <laughs> I would love to. <laughs> First of all, it does not hurt. <laughs> right. <laughs> now, that being said, every once in a while, a needle will smart. But for the, first, for the most part, it's really painless. Essentially, I can fit about 30 of my needles inside the hollow head of a regular blood draw needle. Yes. Um, so so it's, it's, it's much less painless than what people do imagine it to be. Yes. There's also the idea that you're going to have a ton of needles in. You know, most people can get anywhere between, you know, 5, 20 needles, sometimes 30 needles, but you don't feel most of them. So it's really, it, it really a calm process. I always tell my patients it's better to let me know if a needle bothers you than to tough it out and skip relaxation. Relaxation is really the main part of this. Yes. And do you think if you do feel like a little tingling that that's just a message that that was a, there was a block in that area? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Your body gives you those little sensations when things are moving, you know, or when we've stimulated a certain tissue to have change. And that change is good. When the body doesn't react at all, that's when we become stagnant and stuck. Yes. When a patient comes to see you, do you evaluate them? And just to make sure that giving them what they need in regards to the, the pressure points or mm -hmm. the needle points... Yeah. Because there's times, and correct me if I'm wrong, that someone might come in and say, you know, I'm having problems with my knee. But then the pressure point could be the needle. You, you might put the needle somewhere else. Mm, Is yes. that correct? Yeah, and that's very, very common. Yes. Um, because acupuncture understands how the body is connected to one another, you might find that you're coming in for back pain and I'm putting the needle in your leg. Yes, right? that's what I meant to say. Yes. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's Why because, is that? Well, the body is connected in so many different ways. Let me give you a couple examples. Um, for instance, a lot of times we're working on nerve lines. Well, sometimes you go into an area of pain and those nerves are so irritated that they're not responding the way that they should. And sometimes it's easier and even more graceful to back up and access that nerve from an area that isn't irritated and, and, and treat the body in a more gentle way that, that way. When the body's overly irritated, doing something that's overly stimulating isn't actually going to be um, as helpful as what people think it will. Okay. What are some ailments that acupuncture can help with? So acupuncture is part of traditional Chinese medicine. And traditional Chinese medicine is a 5,000-year-old whole-body medicine. So they've been treating 
every ailment in their culture and in their society long before Western medicine came around. So we do have methods for treating all disorders. We are a whole body medicine. That being said, you know, the World Health Organization Mm -hmm. has been such a big ally for acupuncture. Oh, that's good. It's amazing uh, because acupuncture has been utilized so frequently in many countries around the world. Yes. The World Health Organization has taken upon themselves to put out information on studies on their website. And they have listed the conditions in which we have really beautiful studies for showing the efficacy. Okay. One of the most common things that people are used to coming in for acupuncture is any muscular skeletal problem. So muscle pain, nerve pain, and we are wonderful with that. We also treat depression and anxiety really well. And that being said, everybody is different, but our success rates with those are fantastic. Okay. Uh, we also treat insomnia. Oh. We treat digestive disorders. I have people that come in with irritable bowel disorder. Yeah. I mean, it's been around 5,000 years, so it's, <laughs> exactly. I mean, you guys probably cover everything pretty much by yes, this point. Yes, yes, it, it is the one medicine that served an entire culture for thousands of years. Can you provide an example of what, what takes place during an acupuncture session for those that have never tried acupuncture? Oh, yeah. I'd when they to. first come in, like, what does that involve? So the first appointment you come in um, with me and with most acupuncturists, it's going to be about an hour and a half. You're going to get a lot of face time from us, right? And part of this is because um, in traditional China, they didn't do autopsies. It wasn't part of their culture. It wasn't part of the religion there. They didn't want to cut into the body. So a lot of what we learned was based on observation. So we ask a lot of questions. We're going to want your whole health history. We're going to ask you a ton of questions, some that people aren't so comfortable with. We're going to ask a lot about bowel movements. (laughs) We're going to take your pulse, um, feel your pulse. We even look at your tongue because the tongue gives a lot of answers about the body. Oh, wow. After a good, long uh, health history interview, then if it is appropriate for somebody to have acupuncture afterwards, we'll go right into that session. But sometimes it isn't. Sometimes somebody comes in. Uh, For instance, I had a Parkinson's patient come in the other day and they said, I don't have a lot of time. I just want to do one modality right now. And I said, you need to get into exercise therapy. That's your one modality you need right now. Mm. And I said, you know, when you get that modality done, you have a little more time, come back to me and then we'll take the next step. Okay. So we didn't go on to the treatment that day. But most days after the health consultation, I can say, look, I think you're going to be a great fit for acupuncture. Maybe you fit in with one of my other modalities, and I'll make that recommendation as well. Okay. Oftentimes, we'll make herbal recommendations, okay. dietary recommendations, often talk about lifestyle. So we do exercises for people, qigong and tai chi exercises that we can prescribe to people to do at home as homework. Wow. So it's really a, a very a full program of health. After that interview, when we get to the session, you'll be with the needles for a half hour. Okay. Um, And then halfway through, I come and check on you and see if you're doing all right, stimulate the needles a little bit. After that half hour, I take them out, and people leave feeling really wonderfully relaxed. How many sessions? Yeah, everybody's different. Okay. So someone might come in with something super simple like a cold, and I'll treat them a couple times, and they're good. Someone like my Parkinson's patients may come in and need to see me for a lifetime because they're going to have Parkinson's, and they're going to need coping strategies for Parkinson's for a lifetime. That being said, a round of acupuncture is about five treatments. Okay. And about five treatments generalized to about once a week. We really know, are you responding to acupuncture? Is this the best modality for you? Are you responding, but we need to also get something else going for you? Or maybe acupuncture wasn't the best thing for you, and then we're going to send you to the next person that is going to work work hard to get you healthy. Okay. You also use various mind and body practices in conjunction with acupuncture. Can you talk about those and what they entail? Mm, Yeah. Acupuncture is actually one part of a much larger body of medicine called traditional Chinese medicine. Um, Traditional Chinese medicine has many branches to it, including Tui Na, which is our form of massage. We also do herbology. So Chinese medicine for for thousands of years has created this beautiful compendium of herbs and how to use them for almost any disorder. Um, We make these really beautiful balanced herbal formulas that help people with their conditions. So this is also one that we, we often use for our patients. Uh, We also do Qigong and Tai Chi exercises, 
which are a little bit like Chinese version of yoga, right? Okay. They're movement exercises that help move the body, move the muscles, but also move the chi. Okay. Um, we also do cupping. Lots of people love cupping nowadays. I haven't done cupping yet. Have you seen it on yes, like, the I swimmers have. and My athletes? husband actually does it. Ah, did he get the big round yes. marks? Mm-hmm. Isn't that fun? And he, enjo- he enjoyed it. You know, people get a little nervous about it because those marks make it look like it's really painful, yeah. but it's not. Yeah, he said he wasn't. Yeah, people love it. If you love a deep tissue massage, you're probably going to love cupping. And cupping, uh, again, is great for muscular skeletal problems. I used it for my husband for asthma quite a bit because it really opens up the lungs. Oh, wow. um, cupping, in case people don't aren't familiar with it, it, are those cups, those glass cups that people create a suction in. And it brings out these marks on people that look a little bit like broken blood vessels. Yes. But when those marks break up and heal, it is very soothing to the body and to those muscular regions that we're having issues. Okay. Can we dab a little bit more into the herb side of it? Because I just to. I love that part yeah. of it. Um, any recommendations on like what what are your favorites or? Yeah. Oh, Chinese medicine has so many I wonderful know. herbal formulas, and I have to say first that if anybody needs an herbal formula, it's definitely important to talk with a health professional, especially if you're on medications. If you start any herbal formula, definitely make sure that everybody's on board, including your doctor. Yes. You know, Disclaimer. I think really yes. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That being said, <laughs> two of the most famous Chinese medicine herbal remedies are called Yin Chao and another one called Gan Mao Ling. Okay. These are famous for cold and flus. And they treat the cold and flu so effectively when Western medicine doesn't actually have a lot of rev- or avenues for that. Okay. Yin Chao is a very famous formula from thousands of years ago of about uh, five or six herbs in a very balanced formula that help boost the immune system and clear out a cold or flu. Oh, that's good to yeah. know. And they're so popular that you go down to Whole Foods or okay. Sprouts or something like that, and it's, it's on the shelf. Awesome. Um, it's really quite wonderful. Maybe another really popular herbal formula is called uh, Zhao Yao Wan. Um, it's called uh, Free and Easy Wanderer. Oh. And I'm going to bring this one up because it's a good example for, for the community about how acupuncture and Chinese medicine sees a disorder. So this is very common. Often people get stressed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Big revelation. <laughs> so the stress society that we have, we're always, always sitting in a little bit of stress, right? And as this stress increases, we can have these symptoms like being really frustrated easily, maybe getting hot in the face. Uh, some people will get like ringing ears. Um, essentially, their fuse is not as long as it used to be, and it's really easy to get angry, right? Yes. So when that stress builds up like that, we say that that is a wood imbalance, right? And wood is the element there of frustration and anger, and that, that element is becoming excess. And when that element becomes excess, it goes and picks on another element. And in this case, it picks on the earth element. Okay. So Wood, being that frustration, that anger, goes and picks on the earth element. The earth element represents the spleen and the stomach and the digestive system, right? Oh, my God. So I use this because I'm pretty sure most people have seen this at some point where you get so stressed out that your digestion goes off. Yes. And you can get diarrhea, trouble digesting your food. Maybe it feels like after you eat, there's a brick sitting in your yes. stomach, right? So this is wood overacting on earth. Oh, very common. Yes. And this formula, Zhao Yao Wan, is one of the best formulas for balancing out that pattern. So calming that, that wood energy, right? And then also strengthening that earth energy that has caused the digestive upset. So you're going to calm the temper, calm the stress, make yes. people calmer, and then also soothe their digestion at the same time. Oh, that's an awesome tip. And thank you for sharing that. Yeah, that is just a, one of the best examples of, of kind of that dynamic of how Chinese medicine looks at the body. Okay. What is most challenging about what you do? Oh, I think the most challenging thing about what I do is that often when people come to me, Uh, Western medicine hasn't had a great answer for them. You know, Western medicine has beautiful answers for most people, but when you don't fit in that box, people don't know where to go. So they come to me. Sometimes I'm often the Hail Mary. So my job, 
uh, something that is challenging, but I love, right. is that I do a lot of research for people. Lots and lots of research, trying to get to the bottom, trying to untangle a very complicated health situation that has compounded itself sometimes over many, many years, and we need to get to the root of the problem. So I often get people that don't have great answers, and I'm looking for answers that nobody else has found. Um, so I love it. It's challenging, but I'm so honored to be able to do that research for my patients. That's beautiful. What is most rewarding? I think one of the best things <laughs> about being an acupuncturist <laughs> is being able to introduce to people what preventative medicine feels like. You know, how does that feel in their body and how to live in a space where we're not just waiting to break down, but we're thriving all the time and we're taking care of ourselves all the time. You know, when something minute happens that doesn't feel like a big deal, like one headache or yes. a couple days of digestive upset, people just ignore it and they move on. And yes. that's how our cultures worked for a very long time. I get to introduce to them a different space, a different world in which they can take care of themselves on a regular basis and they, they feel clean and they feel like they're thriving in their own body. And that's that's the best part. You're lucky. I am lucky. Yes, I can see it. You talk about it and you're just glowing. And <laughs> that's beautiful. What advice would you offer someone who is considering this career? Oh, this career is such a beautiful path to take, but it's it's definitely a journey. It's, it's definitely a a, a a hard journey as it should be. I mean, we're, we're responsible for people's health, right. right? So people need to realize to be a licensed acupuncturist, you have to have a master's degree. And this master's degree is a four years master's degree compared to most that are a minimum of two years. This is a minimum of four years. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of dedication and a lot of studying that goes into it. With that for your master's degree, there's also internships that go along with it. Like we talked about, I yes. was in China doing my internships, which was so amazing. Um, so there's also internships that go along with it. So you need to be dedicated. You know, it's not something that you do on the side or you start up, you know, a piece at a time. It's actually a big journey. Yes. That being said, it's very worth it. What you learn on that journey and, and the gifts that you can give to the community are really fabulous. Okay. If somebody was going to start this journey... There's this amazing certification they can get. It's actually pretty new to Arizona, something that we've been working at at the board. Okay. And then it's called AccuDetox. And here in Arizona, uh, there's a school, uh, Pima, that does this certification. And it's not four years. It's, it's learning a, a protocol of acupuncture that's just in the ears, and it's five points. Oh, wow. But it's five of the best points. In Chinese medicine, I think. Really? It's so powerful. Why? So these five points, they're called NADA, the NADA protocol. And they've been some of the most studied points in Chinese medicine. Really, the Cleveland Clinic is a famous clinic um, in Ohio, a Cleveland Clinic, that has been treating addiction for many, many years. And they've put so much effort into studying these points for addiction and finding out how powerful it can be for addiction, for trauma, for the stress involved around that entire event. Um, and right now they're offering this certification where you can go, I, I don't know exactly how many weekends it is or how many hours, but it is a great look into acupuncture and Chinese medicine to just see if this is the right path for you. It's powerful. And honestly, the work with NADA for, for addiction and for trauma is so important. And there's so many people that need it. Anything else under the career path? I love for people to start in natural medicine with maybe massage. That's a great way to start. Reiki is a great introduction to it. Just to see, you know, you can start with that patient-practitioner relationship and know that it's something that feeds you. Okay. Um, I love being in that relationship, but you are talking to people that have had really rough health calamities, you know, okay. life traumas, and it can be a little bit stressful. Yes. So it's good to maybe start off um, in another modality where you can see how you fare in that patient practitioner relationship. Okay. Since you mentioned that, how do you de-stress <laughs> when you're getting, you know, you're the healer? How do you de-stress? I'm so glad you brought that up because I have to be honest with you. Yeah. I have been so busy lately that I let it let my coping strategy slide a little bit. Okay. And then I found that going home and being with my family, it's been a little harder to be present. So I've just yeah. rededicated myself to these coping strategies. Okay. So I'm so glad you asked. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me all about them. <laughs> so when I come in to work in the morning, it's really important for me to make sure I'm fully present 
for my patients. Okay. And that involves putting myself aside. My problems, my egos, my issues need to be set aside. And you know what? My problems and egos and issues are really important. So I like to set them aside in a really nice way. I go to my little meditation corner. I sit down with a real box, like an actual box okay. that I find very beautiful. It means something to me. And I take a moment and say to myself, okay, it's time for me to be with my patients. I'm going to take my ego. I'm going to take my problems. I'm going to take all the racing thoughts in my head. I'm going to put it in this box, and it's going to be safe and cared for in this box. I'm going to put it aside, and I'll be back to it later. And in that way, I can be there for my patients completely present. That's wow. really important because I can honor my patients and myself at the same time. Yes. And then at the end of the day, <laughs> <laughs> because I've been working with people that have been through trauma, there's a lot of, you know, a lot of strong emotions involved, a lot of intense moments, right? Yes. So before I walk into my house, in my car, I tap, right? Okay. I take my two index fingers and I tap on a point called urinary bladder two. It's at the inside edge of the eyebrow. So yeah, right where the inner eye corner is straight up on the inside of the edge of the eyebrow. Right? Okay. Yes. And I tap right there and I say a combination of words that are uh, tailored to that day, but sounds something like this. I'm stressed. It's okay to be stressed. I'm allowed to be stressed, but I can let this go for my system now. I'm frustrated. I'm allowed to be frustrated. It's okay if I'm frustrated. I can be frustrated if I want, but it's not serving me anymore. I can let this go for my system now. And when I say I can let this go for my system now, I wave my hands over my body and I push away all that stuff that I don't need that's not necessary for me and send it back into the universe to be sorted out. Yes. And in that way, I'm every single day ritually training myself to put myself back into a relaxed state. And it is so important for me. Thank you, because I think I'm going to apply that. Really? That's yes. great. I do have a, a box. Do you? And it's a small box, and I keep my little crystals in there. But I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to take it to work and apply that. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do that. That makes me so happy. Yeah. <laughs> it's really effective. It sounds, to some people, a little silly, but it works mm. so well to just honor yourself that yes. way. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that makes me happy. <laughs> Is there anything else that you would like to add or discuss that we haven't touched on today? You know, I just want to leave a message out that, you know, Western medicine is fantastic. And it works so well with Chinese medicine. The two of them are really a yin and a yang. They're a balanced pair, right? And I, even the American Academy of Physicians, this is the body that makes the standards for what we're teaching physicians in school. They are saying They've sent out official paperwork. They're saying, look, when you're in pain, when you're having problems, when your patients are in pain or having problems, we want you to send them out for acupuncture, for massage, for these other modalities that don't have side effects, right? right? Let's start there. And then if that doesn't work, you can add in ibuprofen or aspirin or some of these pain medications. And if right. that doesn't work, we can eke it up even more. But what our society has been doing for so long is starting with the sledgehammer. Yes. Right? We don't need to do that. Let's start gracefully. Let's start with the easiest tool with the least side effects and then work our way up. And in that way, I think our bodies are going to be so appreciative yes. that we're honoring what they need and not sledgehammering them. Yes. And, you know, you as an individual, when you do go to the doctor, you have the right to request that, you yeah. know? Yeah, 100%. Yes, and if your doctor, you know, they will honor that. Be like, you know, can we try this first? Well, or what do you think about this? You know, you, you want to work alongside with your doctor, you know? Exactly, and, and, and most of them are so willing to do yes. that. And I think especially amidst the opioid crisis, doctors want to find the best fit for patients that will lead to a good quality of life. And our society is now acknowledging that it's not starting with pain medications, yes. not even starting with ibuprofen or aspirin sometimes. It's starting with natural, healthy ways to rebalance the body. And when that doesn't work, we're so glad we have these other options. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, my pleasure. What is the best way for our listeners to contact you? Oh, well, I would love anyone that has any questions about acupuncture or traditional Chinese medicine, give me a call. My phone number is 480-648-6998. You can also email me at thehealingpoint 
az at gmail.com or go to our website, thehealingpointaz.com. You can write us an email through there. You can check out a little more information about us. Um, but we'd love to hear from anyone that has any questions. We're all about patient education. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for having me and sharing your knowledge about all the topics we covered today. This was really, really fun. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Please visit the website at www.leveluptribes.com. And please subscribe to the podcast and share with your family and friends. Be sure to tune in to our next episode. Catch you all next time, my beloved tribes.